This video is gonna look specifically at tRNA or transfer RNA. If you aren't familiar with transfer RNA is, then make sure you've gone over translation and you understand the big picture of how the central dogma in biology is going to work. That DNA basically codes for proteins. In order to get there, you start with DNA and you transcribe a message called the mRNA and the mRNA is gonna to go to the ribosomes and it's at the ribosomes where the mRNA is going to be read as a genetic code and will be converted into a chain of amino acids which will turn into a polypeptide or a protein depending on the final destination or the final function of that particular protein. So if you understand all of that, then it's gonna be appropriate to take a closer look at these tRNA molecules. Here's a general structure. I'm gonna reveal some words at the side to give you some notes so you can uh, stop and take a look and make sure you're understanding every little detail. But in general, this is the structure of a tRNA molecule. This is the thing that is looking for specific three base codons on the mRNA molecule, and it's gonna to try to match up to the actual codons with something called an anticodon. If you know that the codon on the mRNA is AUG, for example, I know from complementary base pairing that AUG as a codon would produce an anticodon of UAC. And this specific tRNA molecule that has that UAC right here will only bind to the AUG on the mRNA. So anytime an, an AUG shows up, this specific tRNA is going to come. The tRNA molecule also only brings a specific amino acid. So here it is unattached, but normally it comes all prepared with a particular amino acid here. So when we look at the story of a tRNA molecule, we see kind of a, a mini story going on. Each one of these tRNA molecules is going to bring, here's a tRNA molecule, it's going to bring a specific amino acid and that specific amino acid is gonna be brought to join the growing polypeptide chain. Now, here's a sad story. So what happens when this guy has given up its amino acid? Well, after it's given up its amino acid, it needs to go get recharged. And so for every one of these uh, tRNA molecules that exist, there's a specific tRNA active activating enzyme that only fits this particular tRNA. It's kind of a uh, partnership that goes on. It needs to get recharged and, and it can only get recharged with the help of a specific tRNA activating enzyme. Now remember, enzymes have a unique shape. So this unique shape will only fit one type of tRNA molecule. So this thing will actually fit directly into this active site. If you remember that enzymes are very specific three-dimensional shapes, you'll understand why one of these will only fit one of these. So it's fair to say that for every different tRNA molecule out there that can bring a different amino acid, it comes with its own specific set of tRNA activating enzymes whose only job is to fix that particular tRNA. One other thing to know in this process is that ATP is required for this. ATP provides energy in order to help bind the amino acid to this particular binding site. So if you zoom in and take it the simplified diagram form, you can see this is the site up here for where the amino acid is going to get attached. And then this is the anticodon that is gonna be searching for the matching codon on the mRNA. These other sections here are just structural, no real functional things you need to understand about that, except for that because this guy will have a specific shape based on the way that all these little loops are folding, it's only going to fit one specific tRNA activating enzyme. So let's take a look at some of the things that we just talked about and make sure we can understand. So all tRNA molecules have these double-stranded regions. Helps to give it its particular three-dimensional shape. There's an anticodon area at the bottom. There's two other loops that exist. And up at the top, if you really want to get uh, nerdy with this, then you should know that there's a CCA end terminal here and that's the place where the amino acid is actually going to bind and these features will allow this particular tRNA molecule to actually bind on the correct sites in the ribosome to help them actually match up to the codon and drop off their amino acid. What else do we have here? They have slightly different base sequences which means that each tRNA has a unique three-dimensional shape. It affects their 3D structure. Like I said before, one specific tRNA activating enzyme will match each of the different tRNA molecules that exist. There are 20 different tRNA activating enzymes because in general there are 20 different tRNA molecules that can attach the 20 different amino acids that are mainly used in translation. 
energy is required for this entire process. And so you end up with uh, ATP being used. ATP is the main source of energy and ATP is with one, the molecule that's being used to actually attach the amino acid on top of this. You can take a look. There's some extra details down here if you want to try to understand this to a level eight or something like that. Uh, here you can see I've shown another diagram showing everything attached together. So you can see right here, here's the tRNA molecule at the active site of this particular tRNA activating enzyme. You've got the amino acid being joined and then ATP also attaching there. So the energy is kind of used for two particular purposes. So one of them is to attach it to the actual amino acid. And then later on, some of the remaining energy can be used to actually link this amino acid to the growing polypeptide chain to form a peptide bond. So a lot of different ideas are grouped together here. Most of it comes from enzyme substrate specificity. So if you understand things have specific shapes, enzymes have specific shapes, their active sites have specific shapes that bind to the specific shape of substrates. If I say specific shape one more time, my head's going to explode. But that's the idea here. And you have to understand I'm going to have to say it again, that the specific shapes of different molecules and enzymes help them really to carry out their function. So this is a little side story about tRNA, but make sure you can understand how this story of tRNA and its particular function actually fits into the bigger picture of helping a gene to get expressed.